Suppose I want to write programs that deal with animals, where an animal is either a tiger or a snake, and tigers have a color and a number of stripes, whereas snakes have a color and a weight and their favorite food. I could do it this way with lists, and I could look at the first of the list to find out whether it's a tiger or a snake, but there's a lot that's awkward about this representation. Um, I might misspell tiger or snake, um, and there would be no checking of that. Also, I have to do everything with strings to fit it into a list, because if I want to make the stripe count a number, for example, then we get a string versus number type check failure. So this is not a good way uh, of representing different animals that might be tigers or snakes. We want to define our own data type. The way you do that in plate is define type. And define type, after that obviously we write a type. I'm going to write the type animal. Notice that I used a capital A because by convention we always use capital letters for types. And then I'm going to say a, uh, a type is either a tiger or it's a snake. Um, and I've written dot 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 here because I need to put more things. Uh, a tiger is going to have a color or a stripe count, whereas a snake is going to have a color, a weight, and a food. This is still not quite enough information because uh, this says there is a type animal which has two variants. Tiger is a variant, a snake is a variant. And tiger is going to have color and stripe count, but I haven't said what kind of data uh, a color is. So let's represent colors using symbols and stripe counts using numbers. For a snake, color is also a symbol. Weight, let's use a number. And for food, let's use a string. Okay, so that's the syntax of define type. You have a single type name. Um, then you have any number of clauses. Here I just have two for each variant of that type, tiger and snake. And then for each variant, I have some number of fields. I give a name for the field and the type of that field. And after I've done that, I can represent a tiger uh, that is orange and has 12 stripes. Right? And, but I'm supposed to use uh, sorry symbols for our colors. So you saw that I had a type error down there. So now that's an OK tiger. Here's a green snake that's 5 pounds and likes to eat rats. And so let's get rid of these strings now, our lists of strings. And you can see that when we run this program, we will have uh, tiger and snake. And if I look at the types of those things by evaluating them again, you can see that tiger is an animal and snake is an animal. If you're used to Java, you can think of a capital A animal, this type, like an interface. And tiger and snake are two classes that implement that interface. And so I can instantiate the classes. I can't instantiate the type directly. I have to make an instance of the class. Uh, one difference from Java, though, is that tiger and snake don't work as types. They're only variants. They're, they only construct different variants here. Okay. Um, if I look at tiger by itself, um, the, it was created by this defined type. That's where the word tiger came from. But we can also look at its type. It is a function from a symbol to a number to an animal, of course. And snake is going to be similar. It takes different kinds of values for it fields but still produces an animal. So a define type binds the name animal, it binds the name tiger and snake. It also binds some more names, like suppose we want to get the color out of that tiger. Then we can say tiger hyphen color. So this name tiger color came from this tiger and this color, and a define type just added a hyphen in between them to bind that name. And tiger color is going to pull out the orange of a tiger, of this particular tiger whereas snake food of snake green five rats, that's going to get the food string out, the rat string up. Okay, again, that was by taking snake, a hyphen, and a food to form that name. There are some other names uh, bound here, including tiger question mark and snake question mark. So tiger question mark takes any animal, which might be a tiger or a snake, uh, and tells us whether it's a tiger. Of course, we might use that to guard a use of tiger color, uh, just like we did uh, to guard uh, first and rest on a list.